In this segment, what we're going to do, we're going to examine the question, why study fluid mechanics? Now, it turns out that fluid mechanics uh, plays a very important role in our lives. Fluid runs throughout our bodies. We breathe in air. That's a fluid. Uh, it, it, it governs the atmosphere of, of the Earth. Uh, life on Earth is very much fluid dependent. Uh, but what we're going to do, we're going to take a look at a number of different applications uh, where fluid mechanics is very important. We'll start off by transportation. And we'll look at uh, commercial aviation for the most part there. Uh, we'll then look at buoyancy driven flows. We'll then move on to atmospheric oceanic flows. We'll then take a look at flow instabilities. And we'll conclude with some of the fun aspects of fluid mechanics and I'll call that entertaining flows. So to begin with what we're going to do let's take a look at transportation and as I mentioned we're going to be looking at aviation related uh, civilian aviation transportation. So let's look at some video clips on that. So what you're looking at here is the engine of a 777. This, this is on taxi in Montreal. And what you'll notice on the inlet to the engine, uh, that is a light dusting of snow on the ground. And you can see a vortex forming. Uh, that vortex is originating due to the swirl on the inlet to the engine, due to the uh, compressor blades that are spinning around. And through the Helmholtz vortex theorems, we know that vortex lines can either end on themselves like a smoke ring, they can go to infinity, or they can end on a planar surface, a wall. Uh, and, and so what we're seeing here is the last of those three, where the vortex line is ending on the planar surface or the wall, and, and the vortex then moves into the engine. Uh, and then as we go off the snow, the vortex disappears, although it really is still there. Uh, this is another 777. This is on takeoff from Paris Charles de Gaulle. And watch the inlet to the engine here. Uh, again, the Boeing 777. You can see moisture because of the low pressure zone that is created on the inlet to the engine. And depending upon atmospheric uh, conditions, this was kind of a rainy morning, and consequently there is high humidity in the air. And so you can see the moisture. And then watch on takeoff. Watch above the wing. Uh, and there you can see the low pressure zone above the wing and again a lot of moisture forming uh, as the pressure goes low, uh, vapor forms in the air and you can then visualize it. Th this is a Boeing 767. It was a flight between Calgary and Narita Airport, Tokyo, or uh, uh, Japan. And you can see here visualization, which is quite rare. It's sometimes hard to see this, but there's a shock wave that you can visualize through the uh, optical technique called shadow graph. It just happened the angle of the sun was such that you could visualize the shock above the wing. And, and there you can see the shock moving back and forth due to the changing of, of the inlet flow on, on the, the wing due to the turbulence as, as the aircraft was flying. And so the shock wave is not stationary. It moves back and forth in response to that. Uh, this is a flight from Reykjavik to Paris. And, and what you can see here is an early morning flight. And so the light conditions were quite favorable. But you can see the contrails forming uh, in, in behind the jet exhaust. So there's water vapor due to combustion. Uh, 
uh, and, and the water vapor, the, the particles, uh, they, they form little droplets and then they freeze very quickly. And that's what we call the contrails. And so here you can see the contrails forming behind an aircraft flying over Calgary. And if you watch, what happens, those contrails break up through the crow instability. Again, with the Helmholtz vortex theorems, the vortices have to close on themselves and they break up. This is a 747 on landing in Hong Kong International Airport. You can see the leading edge, trailing edge flaps fully deployed. And then finally, this is a 757 aircraft landing in Paris. And you can see the landing gear deployed, the flaps through the shadow. And then as we turn to look at the wing, uh, the, the spoilers go up and the thrust reversers at that point would be deployed. And the flaps are fully deployed as well uh, in order to decelerate the aircraft. So those are a number of applications showing uh, transportation applications of fluid mechanics and, and consequently we can see that there is an awful lot of fluid mechanics everywhere uh, within those flows. The next one that we're going to look at is going to be buoyancy driven flows. Uh, buoyancy driven flows are sometimes used in industrial processes, sometimes they're used for other things, so let's take a look at buoyancy driven flows. Uh, here we have a clip of a smokestack in the middle of Medellin, Colombia. And this was a very, very calm morning and consequently there was not a lot of uh, turbulence within the planetary boundary layer and consequently you can see the smoke going straight up. Uh, th th this is a natural draft cooling tower in Germany. Uh, there you can see that it is being driven by the buoyancy of the hot gases, the, the, the steam rising. Th th this is a flame at a restaurant at Planet Hollywood in Las Vegas and the restaurant's name is Burger and you can see a little bit of a flame instability. This is with high-speed video so it's kind of neat to be able to see that flame ripple around uh, but it is caused by buoyancy. Th this is something that I like doing during the summer, barbecuing in the backyard. You get to listen to a little bit of cold play here. And you can see, uh, due to the index of refraction variations, as the air heats up behind the barbecue, you can visualize it. And then as you go higher up in the barbecue, there are some byproducts of combustion coming out, which obviously would have different index refractions as well. And consequently, you can visualize the flow. This is another buoyancy driven flow. This was in front of the Sony building in Tokyo, Japan. And here you can see the uh, heavier mist descending and then it hits the, the ground and then moves off to the right in a little bit of a jet. And, and that would be another example of a buoyancy driven flow where it is going downwards instead of up. And finally, this is in the Toronto Pearson International Airport, a neat little display they have there. The bubbles are causing circulation in this flow cell and the cubes, you can see them moving due to the injection of the circulation due to uh, the, the bubbles rising. And, and that would be due to the buoyancy of the bubbles that was causing that to rise. So that's a second type uh, buoyancy driven flow. The next one we're going to take a look at are atmospheric and oceanic flows. So let's take a look at atmospheric oceanic flows. And we're going to begin, this is a video clip of Cascade Mountain in Banff, which is near Calgary. And, and you can see the wake of, of the, the mountain. The, the wind was coming and you can see the snow coming off the mountain. You get a recirculation zone there. This is a wind turbine uh, that is being propelled by the wind in the planetary boundary layer. This was in Germany. Beautiful uh, apparatus structures that, that we see. Uh, unless people live near them, they sometimes complain, but I find them beautiful. Uh, this is an aquarium. You can see a fish flowing through and bubbles. And, and th this again is a high speed video clip. And what we're going to do in a second here, we're going to zoom in on the bubbles. And bubble flow is a very, very interesting type of flow, very important for the oceans. Uh, because that's where the oxygen comes from. But you can see the bubbles are flowing uh, right behind one another and they get entrained in the wake of one another, a very complex pattern. And these are jellyfish. These jellyfish are in the Maui Aquarium, a beautiful uh, display that they have with hundreds of jellyfish inside of this. Uh, and, and you can see the jellyfish moving around, the propulsion that they have, a very different type of propulsion system, but very much fluid mechanic related. And so a bio... Uh, bioengineering inspired flow you could study the jellyfish and that, that as well would be fluid mechanics that you get to see in action there so that is atmospheric oceanic flows 
The next one we're going to take a look at, flow instabilities. Now, these are things that you don't always find, and, and once in a while you do, and it's kind of interesting when you do find them. And so I'll show you a couple of examples that I've come across over the years. Uh, we're going to begin at a park in Guangzhou, China. Uh, Bayun Park, I believe, was the name of it. And here is a little fountain that they had. And, and if you listen, you can hear the instability. And the wind direction was from the right. And when the wind would calm down and stop, the instability would go away. And then the wind slows down and it goes away. So a very neat little instability. This is a Ford Fusion car and this had a cavity mode. When you drive it and you get above 40 miles per hour, it drives you crazy due to the noise. Uh, but there's vortex shutting off the front of the window and then it impinges on the back of the window. So listen to this. shedding on the cavity gets lower and lower and so it goes away. So those are two examples of flow instabilities, the water park in China and then the Ford Fusion uh, and, and obviously that's not something that's desirable. Usually the engineers try to avoid it but sometimes you can't avoid it given the, the particular design of a vehicle. Uh, and sometimes a sunroof will do that as well and, and that's why they sometimes have the vortex breakdown device at the front of the sunroof to get rid of it. Uh, last thing we're going to take a look at entertaining flows and so fluid mechanics can sometimes be highly entertaining. I think it's always entertaining but let's take a look at that. Is the water shooting it up? Yeah, but you see it, it's spinning. The ball's spinning. That's a mole in Denmark. This is in rain bubbles. You can see the kids having a lot of fun trying to pop the bubbles. And once in a while the bubbles do escape. And the kids don't get to pop all of them. And then you can trace and see what the fluid flow looks like. And some bubbles aren't as lucky. But this is video and we can fix that and bring the bubble back to life. This is Las Vegas, the Bellagio Fountains. Very, very impressive display of fluid mechanics at the Bellagio Fountain. So that was some entertaining flows. We, we saw a fountain with the ball, we saw bubbles in Rome, and we saw the Bellagio Fountains. So there you can see a number of different reasons of, of why we would want to study fluid mechanics. We looked at transportation. We looked at buoyancy driven flows, a lot of industrial applications, atmospheric oceanic flows, very, very important uh, today with uh, all of the concern about change in weather within in the Earth's atmosphere. Uh, flow instabilities, those are sometimes rare but neat when you find them. And then entertaining flows, uh, fluid mechanics make people happy. And, and consequently, I, I hope you uh, can use this video segment as being a way to provide you with motivation for why you should study hard when you're studying fluid mechanics. It's a very fascinating subject, has many, many applications in our everyday lives.